Does anyone still remember the major construction site at Potsdamer Platz in the 1990s? With the red info box at Leipziger Platz. Well, there's no such box in the so-called Europa City, and there are no floating cranes either, but this current major construction site in Berlin is about seven times as big as the one at Potsdamer Platz at the time. It covers 61 hectares, which corresponds to more than 80 soccer fields. A city within the city with 3,000 apartments and office space for 16,500 people to eventually work here. Everything will probably not be finally finished until year 2030, but the construction work is already well on its way and a lot is already finished. And that's what we are going to look at. This naturally raises questions. How is it possible that such a large open area can be built on in Berlin right in the center? What exactly is being built there? What kind of building technology will be used here? Can you really find your smartest building here? Who is the owner? Is affordable housing being created here? How exciting is the architecture? Is a district trend setting? Since there's a lot to show and explain, I'll split the whole topic up into several videos. In the first video I would like to trace the historical development of the area, explain the background and plans, and show the buildings that have been built around Berlin Central Station, south of Invalidenstraße. In the second video, we will explore the district to the left and right of Heidestraße. Let's start by answering the first question. How can it be that smack in the middle of Berlin there is such a large swath of undeveloped land? To answer this, let's first take a look at the area from a historic point of view. At the beginning of the 18th century, this area was outside Berlin's city limits. It was primarily used for military parade grounds and barracks. In 1717, the Prussian king Frederick William I ordered the royal powder mill to be set up here. This property was located where today's main train station is situated and extended even further, almost a kilometer along the Spree, to shortly before Bellevue Palace. The manufacture of gunpowder was dangerous and accidents occurred again and again. From 1839 to 1843, the powder mills were gradually relocated to Haselhorst in Spandau. When the Industrial Revolution took hold of Germany, everything changed. And Berlin quickly outgrew its borders. In 1839, the king commissioned Karl Friedrich Schinkel and Peter Josef Linné to design expansion plans for the city. In the next 20 years, the Humboldthafen, the Berlin-Spandauer Schifffahrtskanal and the Nordhafen were built by 1859. The Humboldt Harbor, named after the natural scientist Alexander von Humboldt, is a harbor basin designed by Linné. It also has loading streets and cargo area. The port merges into the 12 kilometer long Berlin Spandau shipping canal, which flows through the north port and the Moabit district and connects the Spree in Spandau with the Havel. At around the same time, Berlin's railway development began. In 1838, the first rail link between the royal cities of Berlin and Potsdam was opened with a train station at Potsdamer Platz. Anhalter Bahnhof followed in 1841, from which the first locomotive built by the Borsig Company also departed. In our area, two more of the total of eight terminal stations in Berlin were built east and west of the Humboldt Bassa. The Hamburger Bahnhof in 1847 and the Lehrter Bahnhof in 1871. From the Lehrter Bahnhof, the trains went to the western provinces of Prussia via Lehrte to Hanover. Later, they went from here to Hamburg as well. And the Hamburger Bahnhof was shut down. The Berlin Stadtbahn, which runs across Berlin, was added as an east-west connection in 1882. Even today, the trains run over 331 brick arches over a length of 12 kilometers. From the beginning, the Stadtbahn had separate tracks for city traffic and for long distance traffic. In the first year, 3.5 million people were transported. In the third year, it was 12 million. By 1933, most of the special local traffic tracks were also electrified. The resulting urban rapid transit system on railway lines was given the name S-Bahn in December 1930. In total, there were two terminal stations here with a widely ramified railway area, a freight yard, a railway depot and locomotive shed as well as a later city station. On this historical photo, you can see very well that the later Bahnhof stretched as far as the River Spree. 
Albert Speer then planned to tear everything down again, as part of his Germania planning. The Great Hall of the People was to be built here. It was not implemented, but the entire area was badly destroyed at the end of the Second World War and the latter Bahnhof was demolished after the war due to severe damage until 1959. The operation of the Humboldthafen was also discontinued. The latter Stadtbahnhof was retained. However, this was the last station in West Berlin before the S-Bahn went to the Friedrichstraße station in East Berlin. After the division of the city, the entire railway area was on the outskirts of West Berlin. The areas were used as a freight station and later a container station. Numerous small private companies with trucks to transport freight settled here. The area remained this way until 2003, when a new freight transport center opened southwest of Berlin near Großbeeren. Back to the 90s again. Soon after the fall of the wall, the Berlin Senate was planning a new transport concept for rail transport in Berlin. This resulted in the so-called Mushroom Concept, a new modern tower station at the Leerter city station, which, in addition to long distance and regional rail lines, should also offer connections to the urban train, the S-Bahn and the subway line. In 1992, the federal government decided to establish it. The Hamburg architects Gerkan, Mark and Partners, GMP, under the leadership of Meinhard von Gerkern, won the competition. Just a side remark, this is the same architect's office that designed the former Tegel Airport and our new Berlin Airport BER. After the mushroom concept had been decided, Deutsche Bahn, in coordination with the Senate Department for Building and Housing, launched an urban planning competition in 1994. They invited 14 architectural offices to design an attractive urban quarter with a wide variety of uses and designs fitting for the location. There were two winners, Max Dudler Berlin for the area north of Invalidenstraße and Oswald Martinez Ungers Berlin for the immediate vicinity and the main train station. Ungers design exposes the station building with a northern and southern forecourt. Towards the Spree it is Washington Platz, to the north it is Europa Platz. Ungers divides the area into a western city quarter with seven building blocks which are based on the traditional Berlin block structure and an eastern quarter which provides a conversion of the Humboldthafen where apartments will also be located. Individual buildings flanking the station are arranged on the forecourt. A high-rise building 100 meters high in the north and a cube building in the south. But it was not until 2005 that an architectural competition was carried out on the basis of Unger's concept by the property owner at the time, Vivico Real Estate, and construction finally began. In my next video, I will explore the issue of the development's ownership in detail. So that was some historical background, now let's take a look at the buildings immediately around the main train station. Most of these have already been completed. We are approaching from the south, coming from the German Parliament building and the Federal Chancellery and going towards Berlin Central Station. The most exciting, or should I say the only exciting building, immediately catches the eye, as the architecture is unique to Berlin. The Cube Berlin with its side length of 42.5 meters each, which was fully leased even before its completion in February 2020. The reflective glass facade consists of almost 2,000 individual panels with a special solar coating. An estimated 50% of the building primary energy will be generated directly into the building through heat recovery and roof's solar system. If you look closely, you can see that the outer shell seems to break open at individual folds. Behind these openings are balconies. Behind these openings are balconies that give employees on each of the 10 office floors the opportunity to step outside. At the very top, there is a viewing terrace that is only accessible to tenants. The current tenants include a law firm, the German Railroad Deutsche Bahn, a software company, a PR agency, the market and opinion research institute Gallup and a coffee shop chain. As a general tenant, the coffee shop chain will operate the approximately 1,000 square meters for catering on the ground floor. A market-like, varied gastronomic offer is to be created by subletting. Berlin's Senate building director, Regula Lüscher, praises the new city addition. The striking glass facade and the permeable ground floor zone enrich the public space while Washington Platz is being completed in terms of urban planning.
The building is fully digitized and is controlled by AI, a self-learning brain that evaluates all data from the environment and from the behavior, habits and preferences of the tenants. The cube is considered a thinking and intelligent building, a smart commercial building. This is used for energy efficiency and should make the building more attractive for users. If you want to know more about how exactly this works and who is behind it, you can watch my video which deals with the cube in more detail. Before we move on to the next buildings, a note on the square or courtyard's design. After the surface of the square was provisionally paved for the opening of the station in May 2006, the final expansion began in November 2010. The basis was the result of an open space planning competition from 1999. The open space was designed on the basis of traditional Berlin sidewalks with small stone paving and slabs in various dimensions, made of Silesian granite and with benches made of natural stone. A grove of trees consisting of three green islands was created on Ella Trebestraße. The northern part is planted with 11 Japanese pagoda trees. The work was completed in April 2012 and the cost amounted to around 2.8 million euros. There is not much that is extraordinary to say about the block development with five buildings, except perhaps that here too emphasis was placed on energy efficiency. So I quote the investor. Under the motto, your freedom is at the center, CA Immo built the John F. Kennedy House right next to Berlin Central Station and Spreebogen. In addition to its central location, tenants can appreciate the building's waterfront view the optimal transport connections and the proximity to the government district. The John F. Kennedy House stands out with its expressive architecture by the renowned architects Auer and Weber from Munich. The varied facade impresses with highly quality materials such as shell limestone and brushed aluminium. In the office floors, the ceiling height is up to 3 meters, floor to ceiling windows and corridor walls with glass cutouts make the house airy and transparent. The John F. Kennedy House in Europa City is a future-oriented green building and has been certified with platinum by the German Sustainable Building Council, DGNB. It surpasses the minimum requirements of the current energy saving ordinance. Next to this is a five-star hotel Steigenberger at the Chancellery, Steigenberger am Kanzleramt, with its usual urban architecture from O and O Baukunst and more spacious interior design by Markworth Thionville. With a gross floor area of about 23,000 square meters, 339 rooms, including 23 suites, it is one of the largest hotels in the capital and the only five-star hotel near the main station. Let us have a view at the Intercity Hotel Berlin Hauptbahnhof behind it, from the long distance platform. The Intercity Hotel has 411 rooms. Two commercial units are also housed in the building. The design by the architects Reichel and Staud was implemented by 2013. The building was certified according to the German Society for Sustainable Building with platinum. A short quote from the local newspaper about the architecture. The hotel is located in a grey concrete box, which is characterized by the absence of architecture. Behind it, you can see the office and commercial building that bears the name Bertha Berlin, because it is in the Bertha Benchstraße. It was created as the fourth and last component of the so-called Leerta Stadtquartier. It is a nine-story office building. Because we are on the platform at the moment, also a few comments about the two buildings north of the tracks where the Edge Grand Central, the first German building to be pre-certified with a well-building standard gold and the DGNB Platinum, actual each of which is a top grade. It will be the smartest and most innovative office building in Germany. Edge Grand Central is minimized with its cutting-edge IP backbone energy consumption and all wired or wireless interconnected in the building. Both the working life in the green building is light and pleasant. End of quote. So we can then argue which of the two buildings is more intelligent, the Cube or the Edge Ground Central. Let's go back to Washington Square. At the next hotel, the Meininger, I like to quote from an article by Ralf Schönball in the local newspaper Tagesspiegel of May 26, 2016. The development of the area at the main train station began with an urban planning crash 
which led to the expectation of the worst. One of the first new buildings is still a synonym for a yield-providing architecture. The Meininger Hotel, a grey box with narrow slits, thrown from the leftover ramp of the structural monotony. Senate Building Director Regula Lüscher had passed responsibility for this disaster to her predecessor in office. At the same time, Lüscher was advertising her own building board, a kind of taste police whose regulations building builders should submit to for large-scale projects. In fact, apart from the height of the building, the Meininger had grown out of the ground largely without regulations, which prompted Meinhard von Gerkan to rant, he recognized primitive, cheap and vulgar architecture in the area around the main train station, which made him fear for his work. The criticism was aimed primarily at the Meininger Hotel, but not only. And some people were surprised that the Senate building director found words of praise for the Sandstone Ensemble, made up of four blocks across from the Chancellery. However, the square with the same narrow window openings and the buildings that changed in the design of the facade openings did not really sweet everyone's taste. Let's better have a look at an object of art, a 3.5 meter high bronze sculpture, La Partezza, The Departure, by Gianpaolo Talani, has been standing on the square since 2015. The sculpture for Berlin was a long cherished wish of Talani. There are places that address our feelings in a special way, that draw us in and hold us captive as if in an invisible web that surrounds the feeling of the world. For me, Berlin is such a place that history has given us this fascination, said Talani. After the figure had been designed and modeled over two years, a company in Vicenza took over the casting. The Traveller was financed by a company for law firm software and the German city and property development company, which also coordinates the construction work in the government district. The Senate Department for Urban Development, the Commission for Art and Urban Space and the Roads and Green Space Office of the Mitte District were also involved in the project. With that, we leave the solitary block development behind us and go via Washingtonplatz to the Humboldthafen. As early as 1932, the forecourt of what was then Lerta Bahnhof was named after George Washington. It is also important to know that the water of the Humboldthafen, as well as the Spree behind us, belong to the area of East Berlin. The border was there for the west side of the Humboldt Basin, even if the wall ran on the east side. It was here that Günther Litfin became the first victim of the wall when he tried to swim across the basin to West Berlin on August 24, 1961. He was shot dead. This is the Humboldthafen 1. The first building was opened in summer 2015 on the southeast corner of the harbor basin. Since then, the office ensemble has housed the Berlin headquarters of the auditing firm PricewaterhouseCoopers. The 120 meter long and 25 meter high building looks like a cruise ship. It has three open courtyards. From the third inner courtyard on Alexander Ufer, passers-by can walk to the waterfront promenade with three restaurants. The lower two floors are intended for restaurants and shops. The public use of the promenade was a condition for the architectural competition of the Senate Building Administration. The office ship was built by the Dutch project developer OVG Real Estate from Rotterdam. With an integrated combined heat and power unit, ventilation systems with heat recovery, energy optimized cooling systems, a facade with the best insulation values and three pane glazing. The house is currently the greenest office building in Berlin and is one of the top 10 most sustainable office buildings in Germany. The investors from Humboldthafen 1 sold the office building, which costs more than 130 million euros, to two pension fund companies. When everything is ready and the restaurants open, it could be really nice here in the evenings. If you look around, there are still some undeveloped areas at the harbor basin. This is currently being wrestled between the Berlin Senate and the Mitte District. Opposite, on the construction site east of Washingtonplatz, the federal government is planning a block development 
that is architecturally and in terms of its dimensions based on the buildings we looked at earlier. On the east and west side of the Humboldthafen Basin, two narrow block buildings are to be built. The district would now like to leave the areas at the port basin undeveloped and prefer to develop open spaces here. Since this contradicts the valid development plan, the issue has been negotiated in the House of Representatives for several months. As far as I know, the outcome of these discussions is still open. Now a look at two already completed buildings that have been realized in recent years based on a design by the renowned architect Hadi Teherani. In the two buildings next to the listed harbour basin, a mixture of residential, office and retail space has been implemented, with a proportion of high-quality condominiums dominating. What does the prospectus say? The award-winning Humboldthafen project was created by star architect Hadi Teherani on the banks of the listed Humboldthafen in Berlin Mitte. A total of 188 exclusively equipped apartments in direct proximity to the water offer the residents a third in touch of luxury combined with a high feel-good factor. An indescribable feeling of living is created by light-embraced living areas, spacious balconies, lodges, terraces or bay windows. Sunrises and sunsets can be enjoyed particularly well. Convince yourself of the calming effect of the water in what is probably the most central place in Berlin city center and enjoy the unique light access and full hours of sunshine through the different orientations of the living areas. There are still apartments available. For example, a two-room apartment with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, 122 square meters, cost 2,800 euros a month rent without heating or 3,157 euros including the heat. I would like to conclude the first part of the Europa City with a panoramic view. The next part then deals with the even larger area north of Invalidenstraße. First of all, thank you for watching. I look forward to any comments, a like, a subscription or a recommendation. Thank you and see you then.